Hi, I'm Kevin Hill. And as you can see by the sketch already on the canvas, today we're gonna do an underwater scene. And this is my first one ever in oil paint. I've done them in acrylic, but never in oil. So it should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying this and wanting to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with our two inch brush and just a little bit of blue. That's all it is. And so you can see I did more sketching than I, you know, then I'm really going to use. A lot of this is going to get covered. I did that on purpose because, because I wanted to make sure that I had in mind how the painting was going to go. So it's like a little practice for me. See, here we go, already eating up my sketch, and that's just fine. Starting at the bottom and working up exactly opposite from a regular painting because obviously the light is filtering down. There. This looks really good. Just doing these kind of sweeping motions just to give a little motion to the underwater scene. Like I said, I've, I've done these in acrylic. And they, in fact, it was a rather large one in acrylic. And if you're interested in seeing that, it's here on another video. You can go check that out. There, see how I lighten my pressure. Up here is clear gel and white, actually, from here to about there. Clear gel and white. You can get those on the website if you want some. They're very good. Sure is a lot of help. <laughs> to have good paint, good quality paint and medium, big deal. There you go. Next, I'll just drop in some nice large lines here with light color. This is just an off white. And maybe allow those to kind of come down a little, but not too far. Okay, that's good. Now take the brush and you see how the light's just off center. Not much, but just a bit. Take our brush and drag down to, to get what feel like maybe a little sun rays coming through the water. You don't want anything too crazy. Just, you know, just enough to show. Maybe a little something that's going on up here. It's kind of interesting. This is way easier than doing them in a landscape, by the way. Just simply easier because this is much more forgiving because you can blend. All these colors can blend together without issue. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in our little cliff over here. You know, I don't want to go crazy with it because it might show up, you know, too much. But now as we go over here, we'll use this as an excuse to make the corners darker. See that? So it's really dark in the corners and then it goes out to kind of lighter. I think that'll look nice. There. Now we may have to, and it would not surprise me at all if we have to, <laughs> wipe this down with a paper towel. There's a lot of paint up here already. So we can do that anytime we want to. And let's, let's go ahead and plan on doing that. I'll probably do that as soon as I'm done painting it in. There we go. And you see, we're gonna have to do something with our clownfish here because little bits of paint are starting to sneak into it. Plus the blue is not a good color anyways for it. So we may come in here again with a paper towel and I'll kinda, I'll let you know how that goes. We'll, we'll work on that one. I'll, I'll make sure you guys know what I do to that. I'm just already thinking about the fish. Now I'm wiping out the inside of our clownfish. You can see I took just a couple minutes and I cut around the edge as best I could with the dark. Just, just took this dark and ran it all around. And that's good. I also took a second and I did wipe down this big pillar of rocks here. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get as much of this paint off of this fish as possible. I'm doing that with my little paper towel. Now, just for the record, I have a very, very good photo of a clownfish sitting right here. I'm not making this up as I go along, because I don't know about you, but I don't have a clownfish and all of its little pieces and shapes memorized. So I'm going to use a photo. There we go. Now I'm finishing up our underpainting here. You see, I'm just working with basically all my colors kind of loosely to get to get all this kind of coral underpainted and finished and looking good. See that? You want a lot of color in your coral. <laughs> there. That's good. Still, and I've got another fish over here still leaving that blank. This one's actually a lot better because it's got less paint. This one over here, I smoothed out with a blender brush after I was done wiping it with a paper towel to just try to get everything even at least. It's pretty much totally dry. No paint, you know, and the paint that is on there is worked so well into the canvas that you can't, you know, you don't get a whole lot on your finger. So basically dry. 
I think we'll be okay. I just didn't want any green in my clownfish, if you know what I mean. That would be a little weird. We're not interested in, in a weird looking clownfish. Good, there we go, that's, that's starting to look nice. I'm just gonna finish up my coral and then we should probably start highlighting some of it. Now let's go ahead and block in some of the highlight on our coral. You see I've got a, looks like I need more white here pretty soon. I've got a nice off-white color going. And honestly, as far as coral goes, unless you're somebody who goes diving a lot, I can't imagine, you know, really caring too much if everything is perfect. You know, in a landscape, nothing's really perfect. I think we're gonna do the same here in this coral reef. And you know, these little pieces of coral may be incorrect, you know what I mean? Not, not true to nature, and that's okay with me. It's art. As long as it, 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 we walk away with a feeling of coral, I'm gonna be happy. There we go. So that's kind of that's kind of my thought, my thought for for keeping ourselves from going too crazy. But in the same time, you want to keep it coral looking. So if something doesn't look right or looks out of place, go ahead and change it. You want to make sure everything looks at least correct. <laughs> nice. That looks that looks good so far. So I just put that highlight on. We will add more highlight when we you know, use maybe a detail round or something just to, to block that in a little more. This just gets our highlight established. Now it's finally time to go ahead and paint in our little clownfish. I spent another few minutes with some black, actually black with red in it, in case it hits the orange. And I did the little black lines. I used them as a bit of a sketch too. So now all we have to do is fill it in. And it looks like we did a pretty good job of getting this guy clean. So this is basically basically just canvas no paint on it at all which is great that blue in there is so stuck i don't even see green when i do this there's a lot of red so i don't think we would get green anyways but hey just in case right there we go i'm using my picture to make sure i put the orange where it needs to go and the white where it needs to go but if you get it wrong maybe you can always take a i don't know like a paper towel or something and try to clean that area up and do it again now with a nice dark orange, we're going to add some three-dimensional shading here. You see I went and added a highlight real quick with yellow and white. And now I'm just trying to get a lot of this shadow in. This is a good time to kind of clean up some of your edges, especially against the black, because the black won't really mess this color up. It sure does mess that orange up. Even though I put red in it, it wasn't as forgiving as I was hoping it would be. There. Nice, and once we're done with all of this, then we can put the black in. Now with a clean detail round, I'm gonna just drop in the white part. You see, I just spent two seconds there putting in an eye. There we go, I'm gonna be, oh, it's mixing a little with the blue there, but that's actually okay. That's not a bad thing, and here's why. Because we're underwater. <laughs> there you go, there's the reason. Because I really want this fish to feel like it's part of the painting, so a little blue especially along the top there, and along especially, even more especially, the bottom. <laughs> oh boy. There, that black with a little bit of red, that shouldn't hurt anything. See, my brush very quickly becomes dirty with just the stuff that's around, so I don't even bother tinting my white. If this was acrylic, you would have to tint your white to make it, to make it not so harsh. It's not so just, oof, there's white, <laughs> right? All right, that, that looks pretty good. Let me keep going here. And then we can kind of add a little more shading. Really, it's done the same way with a little bit of blue and white. Now I'm gonna pretty much repeat everything I did to the large fish here, to the little fish. And it's actually gonna be so much easier because it's so tiny. <laughs> there you go. Their highlight's already almost done. And over here, you know, we've got the the fins to kind of think about, but let's just get a little uh, right there. Good. And then I can kind of put the put the different colors where they need to go. You know, the black and stuff, and the white. That looks decent. <laughs> there you go. Slice a little highlight there. Nice. This is so fast. Wipe my brush. And it also doesn't need to be nearly as perfect and bright as this one. This one matters. That one doesn't. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the black in there. Oops. <laughs> Yikes. Make that a little larger there. Nice. 
nice. A little blue and white. It's kind of a condensed version of the other one. There. Keep this side a little darker. So all around just quieter. That's good. Actually, let's jump over here to the one on the left. I'd like to do something that we didn't do yet, is take just a little bit of blue and work on just a touch of a reflected light, you know, because we are underwater. We should have a little reflected blue here and there, just like you would on a tree or anything else that you paint. You always like to have little shots of blue hanging around the painting where it looks like, you know, looks like some light bouncing around. That looks good. Not too much, just, just subtle, very subtle, nice. Now that everything's in, I don't see any problem with coming in with just pure black on the brush because I think it'll eat up everything else. Every once in a while, kind of give your hand a little wiggle like I'm doing. See that, it creates a better edge. For some reason, they, the clownfish seem to have those edges on the black, don't know why. I'm not a fish expert. I'm just looking at a picture. <laughs> there. That looks decent. Right there, some. Then right in here. A little black edge here. Like that. And then we'll do kind of a bit of that over here and just keep going until the fish is done. I'm finishing, kind of tapping on some highlight back here. You want to make sure that you don't get it too big back there. You want things smaller in the background, bigger in the foreground. I mean, I say that because it's kind of hard to remember stuff like that sometimes when you're doing paintings that are just different. <laughs> and that's, for me, you know, flowers, if you're not used to flowers or underwater, like if you're not used to underwater like I am, <laughs> like not saying like I am, like I'm saying like I'm not used to. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, you know what I mean. Anything that you do that you're not used to, you just tend to forget stuff, easy stuff. So just watch out for that. That's all I'm saying. Lots of words to say, not too much. <laughs> I do that a lot, don't I? All right. Right over here, I'll place some more of that highlight. I'm using my detail round. This comes off nice and soft. It will mix a little, but that's okay. A little green back here never hurt anything either. See that? Just allow it to mix. Nice, a little red would be okay. Not too much red in the background, the purple would be nice. Get some color back here to the coral, the distant coral back there. That's all that is. Cool, maybe some more green there. And just work on your painting like this, kind of finish it out, figure out what needs to be done and do it, and then you'll be pretty much finished. I like getting the clownfish done, kind of get the, kind of get the main subject out of the way, and then you just come around and refine items as they need refining, and then, then you got yourself a, a nice little painting. Looks like it should be in a fish bowl or fish tank. <laughs> That'd be kind of a cool frame, wouldn't it? All right, and maybe a little more work on some of the close-up coral, a little more light, a little more blue, just to keep it seated underwater. Oh, the other thing I did over here on the dark, remember I was putting in the black? I put some dark blue right over that because I felt like the black was a little too harsh. That gives you a thought as to what I've been doing. Now, one of the last things I want to do is just add in a little school of fish that's swimming up and into the light. I love that. That's just pretty. And it adds a, it adds an element of, I don't know, action happening in the background, you know, like birds would in a landscape. <laughs> there are birds today. Just a little school of fish, very soft and subtle. So they just wrap right in from kind of, it helps to tie the whole painting together. I don't know. I just like that movement there. And that's about all you need. Not too many at all. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.